So, we have been discussing about the various aspects of uh, nucleic acid structure, uh, how uh, the whole thing started with fiber diffraction and uh, single crystal x-ray data on shorter oligonucleotides has helped in obtaining great details about the structure of the nucleic acids at atomic resolution. The various aspects of the structure we have discussed and uh, we mentioned uh, about the different types of uh, models such as the bDNA, ADNA, cDNA, ddNA and things like that. We also indicated the importance of this uh, nucleic acid with regard to the hereditary functions and we also talked about one of the new discoveries which is called as the zDNA and here actually this slide is a continuation of that uh, discussion and makes a direct comparison of uh, the most uh, prominent nucleic acid structure which is the bDNA and then we have the left handed which is the zDNA. And this is the comparison here of the two. By and large you can see here this bDNA which is the one which is the prominent one in uh, all, all systems. It is a right handed helix, you can see the helix goes in this manner and, and there is a duplex. Of course, the other strand also goes in this manner here, both are right handed helices, but they run in opposite directions. So, the 5 prime and to 3 prime and one uh, sense, other one goes from the other end 5 prime and to 3 prime end and they are held together by the base pairs here and these base, base pairs are called the Watson Crick base pairs. So, these are all the base pairs and it is the overall features of the bDNA are given here. So, you can see there is a big groove uh, which is indicated by this here, this is the big groove, it is called the major groove and there is a smaller groove which is called the minor groove here and therefore, you can see that all the base pairs one end opens in the minor groove, the other end opens on the major groove. So, these are the characteristic um, appearances of the bDNA. On the other hand, the zDNA is actually a left handed helix. You see the helix goes like this and it is also zigzag, it is not as smooth as it is as the bDNA is. It also goes in a zigzag manner and you have the left handed helix as indicated by this. Okay, and there is a deep, there is a deep groove here and there is a bulge at this point. So, therefore, this structure is not as smooth and symmetric as this one is. And here are the parameters which are given for these uh, two structure types. This is the firstly right handed DNA, bDNA is right handed versus a left handed DNA here. And the number of nucleotides per turn, so when the system repeats itself, the cycle repeats itself, how many nucleotide base pairs are there? The bDNA has 10 base pairs and therefore, we say 3.4 angstroms into 10, there is a 34 angstroms is the rise per turn that is indicated here next. And then whereas the zDNA has 12 base pairs per turn okay, and the diameter of this uh, helix, the entire helix here this is 20 angstroms and here it is 18 angstroms somewhat less. And the rise per base pair is 3.4 angstroms here, this is 3.7 angstroms here and the total helix pitch that is 34 angstroms because if you take 30, 10 base pairs per turn 3.4 into 10 that makes it 34 whereas this one goes to 45 angstroms, one particular turn what is the rise, what is the rise per um, one turn 45 angstroms here. And the random per base pair there is a rotation per base pair this is 36 degrees and this is minus 30, what is minus 30 degrees because it has to go in the negative sense because it is a left handed DNA. If I take the right handed rotation as positive, the left handed rotation will be negative and therefore it is minus 30 because 36 into 10 will be 360 degrees that makes a complete turn whole way and minus 30 into 12 makes it 360 degrees and therefore that is a 12 into this will be minus 30. And there are grooves here okay wide and shallow through different kinds of goals and these are very well stacked and these the base pairs are not very well stacked in the zDNA. So, you see the stacking is not very good whereas here the base pairs are parallel to each other and they stack one over the other and that is uh, that is a quite a good uh, structure symmetrical structure. And now there is one more the important parameter which is not of course visible from here that is called as the glycosidic torsion angle. What is the glycosidic torsion angle? I will show you that uh, soon. And then I also mentioned in the last time that uh, uh, the in the case of bDNA it is a monomer which is the repeating unit, monomer is the repeating unit whereas in the zDNA it is the dimer which is a repeating unit and that is why these are given separately here. And um, for the bDNA 
there are two kinds of um, glycosidic torsion uh, for the ZDNA, two kinds of torsion angles are indicated here syn and NT. One of the nucleotides, the guanine nucleotide has the syn conformation whereas the citidine nucleotide has the um, uh, NT conformation. And the sugar geometries whereas in the BDNA they are all C2 prime endo which is the uniform whereas here it alternates. So, C3 prime endo gonosine has the C3 prime endo sugar geometry and the cytosine, citidine, uh, cytosine has the C2 prime endo sugar geometry. Therefore, this makes the dinucleotide as the repeating unit. Now, what is the uh, glycosidic torsion angle? This is explicitly indicated here. So, you see here this is the sugar ring, the sugar ring is a 5 member ring here. This is shown for the D RNA, but it does not matter, it is the same for the DNA as well. So, in the case of DNA, this OH group is replaced by the hydrogen, same here. Okay. Now, I, the glycosidic torsion angle is this, this is the glycosidic torsion angle, rotation around this bond. Okay, this is this is labeled as chi. Okay, and a um, uh, proper model of that. This is the schematic on the left hand side, and the proper model of that is shown on the on the right hand side. So here it is the, both the all the things are included in this. So this torsion angle, you notice here, what is the difference between these two? Here it is shown for the purine ring. This is a purine base. Okay. And uh, this one is uh, the guanine, what is chosen here is a guanine because you have an NH2 group here and uh, adenine also has an NH2 group here. So, this is uh, guanine has an NH2 group here, adenine has an NH2 group there. Okay. So, if the rotation is around this bond, what is the difference between these two? See the 5 membered ring, this is the 5 membered ring of this purine ring comes on the side of the oxygen here. The, this torsion angle is defined with respect to these four atoms. Okay, if it, you can either define this way or you can define with respect to these four atoms. So either way, it, it is the same thing. So you can choose a convention where you want, to, how you want to choose. One particular convention is used. So the essential point to note is from the structure point of view is that the five-membered ring here comes on side of the oxygen, and here there is a proton attached. Notice the proton is not shown here, but there is a proton here. There is a proton here and that proton is called as the H8 proton. Okay. And in this case, this proton is here. Okay. So, the protons are on two opposite sides in the two cases. Now, in this case, this is called as the thin conformation whereas this one goes outside compared to the relative to this oxygen position and in this case, it comes closer and this is called as the anti conformation. Typically, it is shown in terms of the structure when you actually build the model, how does it look? So, you have the C2 prime endo geometry here, sugar ring is in the C2 prime endo geometry and the anti uh, uh, glycosidic torsion angle. So, this orients rotation around this bond is indicated here. You see this NH2 groups come close and this is the proton, this is the indicated, this is the proton here. You see this proton comes closer, comes closer to the oxygen of the sugar ring here. So, whereas that proton is far away, this far away compared to the oxygen that is this one here, this is far away as I mentioned, this is far away. But this one will now be, this will be closer to the sugar ring, sugar ring protons here, the H1 prime protons that will be close, this proton will be close to the sugar ring protons here, whereas this proton will be farther away from the H1 prime or the H2 double prime protons in the case of the anti conformation. C2 prime endo sugar and the anti uh, position of the uh, glycosidic uh, of uh, torsion angle. So, and this will be important. Why I am mentioning this is because this will be extremely important when we actually use these information for structure calculations with regard to determination of the structures, what are the short distances from the NMR point of view, which are the important distances one has to see. From that point of view, this is very important. That is why I am pointing out these things at uh, definition of the glycosidic torsion angle. So, we have uh, C3 prime endo geometry for the sugar ring in um, uh, A type uh, structures or RNA structures and B type structures it is the C2 prime endo sugar geometry and the glycosidic torsion angle is anti conformation. It is both in BDNA and ADNA whereas uh, you have possibilities of uh, glycosidic torsion angle in the syn and anti conformations in the case of uh, uh, ZDNA and um, there are other possibilities as well. Now, okay, is that all about the nucleic acid structure? Surely this is not why we are saying this. 
because you see you remember the DNA if it were a duplex as indicated here for so long the length of the DNA length of DNA will be of the order of centimeters ok. Considering 1 billion base pairs and DNA length in this uh, uh, every cell it will be in the order of centimeters because 34 angstroms per rise and 1 billion base pairs if you take it will come to the order of centimeters. Now this cannot be accommodated in, in a cell which is only of 1 micron size and the nucleus is even smaller than that. Therefore DNA folds, DNA folds multiple times there may be stretches of various other kinds of strands where other kinds of base pairing possibilities, there may be single strand possibilities all sorts of things can be present. And in the case of RNA we mentioned already that the mRNA is a single stranded RNA and in the case of um, tRNA and ribosomal RNAs there can be different kinds of structures possible with various kinds of folds of the backbone and resulting in various different kinds of base base interactions. What are the possible base base interactions ok that is what we are going to see here. So you can have so far we talked about the purine pyrimidine base pairs that is the one which is indicated here on the top. A T base pair ok now this is purine pyrimidine base pairs. So what is this is the pyrimidine ring and this is the purine ring this is A U and G C for the A U how many hydrogen bonds are there 2 hydrogen bonds and uh, for the G C or the uh, for the G C we have 3 hydrogen bonds which are holding them together ok. Notice clearly which what is the nature of the hydrogen bond this particular position is hydrogen bonded to this nitrogen here ok and what is R? R is a place where the sugar ring is attached. Here the sugar ring is attached in this position and in this case in the purine the sugar ring is attached at this position. This position is called as the N9 position. This is N9 position and this is N1 position. This is N1. The nomenclature goes in that manner. Whereas for the um, pyrimidine this is this, this position is called as the N3 position. N3 the numbering goes in that manner ok. So the standard nomenclature with regard to the IUPAC conventions etc you have this is the N9 position this is the N1 position this is the N3 position this is all we have to remember here. So so far as the purine pyrimidine base pairs are concerned these are the Watson Crick base pairs which are there in this BDNA. So duplex go the backbone is in green and the purple are the base pairs this is the possibility. Now there is another possibility also here see look what, what is involved here. So what has happened here this base pair this is different from this base pair the reverse Watson Crick. This portion is the same ok the A is in the same configuration NH. Now what has changed in this NH NHN uh, the R is here whereas the R is here in this case the R is up which means there is a rotation with respect to that with respect to this axis with respect to this axis there is a 180 degrees rotation therefore this R has come on to the top this R is at the same place ok the sugar ring is at the same place here the sugar ring goes on the top ok. So therefore this is called as reverse Watson Crick and same happens here as well ok and R is here and in this case the NR is there. So this is both in the AU as well as the GC base pairs it goes in this manner. Now so this is the other possibility of hydrogen bonding surely these people had toyed around with all these possibilities finally came up with this it turned out that this what they came out was, was finally the correct one with regard to the BDNA. But this kind of a things also the people have toyed around to see whether this one fits some experimental data did the building model model building did not fit into this one so they came out with this. But this can be there this can be there in other kinds of uh, situations where the DNA folds and various kinds of interactions can happen these ones can be there. And then look at this this is called as the reverse this is the AU Hoogstein this is the Hoogstein base pairing. Hoogstein base pairing what happens here the NH is base pair to this the uh, this or, uh, configuration is the same here ok. Now this is the purine ring and it is this nitrogen it is this nitrogen the 5 member ring nitrogen is involved in the hydrogen bonding with this NH here ok. Whereas in this case it is the NH of the uh, N of the 6 member ring. Whereas here is the N of the 5 member ring. 
So that is here, this is free here right, this n, n is free and that now comes here to take part in the, so therefore that is a rotation of the glycosidic torsion angle which brings this nitrogen closer to this hydrogen here. This is the N3 of, of U is base to N7 of, of, uh, of the purine and that is called as the Hoogstein base pairing. So Hoogstein probably was, was the one who proposed this. Similarly, there is the reverse Hoogstein base pair. In this case, the NR here, the NR is here, NR is there on the same side of the duplex or the on the base pair that is uh, uh, they are both open in the same groove whereas here you see the NR is here and this NR is here and therefore this is the AU reverse Hoogstein base pair. Okay. Once again this is the N7, N3 but the glycosidic torsion angle is different and therefore this one has gone on to the other side, U reverse Hoogstein. And this one is a wobble base pair. Now then you have the so called wobble, uh, well so that was the reverse Hoogstein. Now this is the wobble base pair, wobble base pair GU wobble. See so far we talked about the AU base pair but here it is a GU now. The GU, GU is not the thing which is normally supposed to happen, we used to we have to have a GC base pair. Okay. But here we are now talking about GU base pair, the G pairs with U. Conventionally we are AT base pair or AU base pair but here it is the G, G pairs with U. This also is possible and now this hydrogen, hydrogen bonding scheme here is like this. So the, uh, this N1 of G pairs with this oxygen here and the uh, once again this is the normal GU uh, base pair, okay, NR here, NR here and the reverse is again the NR goes on the other side. So it depends on which oxygen is involved in the hydrogen bonding, whether it is this oxygen or this oxygen. That is what determines whether it is in the you know, normal way or it is in the reverse way. So both this is called as the wobble base pair because this is normally not there in the uh, duplex DNA. And then similarly you have the AC, you see here this is the AC uh, uh, reverse Hoogstein, okay. AC reverse Hoogle, uh, wobble and AC reverse Hoogstein. AC reverse meaning what we normally have AT base pair, right. So when the T is replaced by C, we call it as a wobble, AC is a wobble base pair but this is also possible. So such hydrogen bondings are also possible. So you have this NHN here, NHN, both are NHN hydrogen bonds in this case. Okay, in all of these cases one is, N, these are NHO hydrogen bonds in, in this case. In these ones we have NHN hydrogen bonds, one NHO hydrogen bond, in all of these one NHN, one NHO, here also one NHN and one NHO whereas here you see AC river in this um, uh, uh, GU wobble we both hydrogen bonds are NHO and the reverse also both are NHO hydrogen bonds and in this AC reverse they are both NHN hydrogen bonds. NHN hydrogen bonds is the amino uh, proton is participating in the hydrogen bonds. Therefore, you see how many different possibilities are there for hydrogen bond formation. Now then you can also home your purine base pairs. Just as we talked about purine pyrimidine base pairs, you can also have purine purine base pairs. So here it is a A and A, AA base pair okay, and different types. So AA N1, okay, N1 to amino. So you have the one of the uh, proton is, is the amino and the other one is the uh, uh, nitrogen. Okay. So you have here this uh, uh, amino of this is hydrogen bonded to this nitrogen here of the 6 member ring and similarly 6 member ring of this is paired to this nitrogen here A. Okay. This is one AAN1 amino symmetric base pair and then you have AAN7. N7 is involved, in this case you see it is the N7 which is hydrogen bond to the amino, this is the N7, N7 is hydrogen bond to the amino NH proton here and correspondingly for this one N7 is paired to the hydrogen bond here. So this is um, we have the amino protons participating in this and similarly here as well AAN1 amino N7 amino. So here we use both N7, both places N7, here we use both places N1 and here we use N1 and N7, one case it is N7, other case it is N1. So it is enormous possibilities of hydrogen bonding schemes are possible and of course only when, of course you cannot remember this, when you, but certainly when you actually have to build models, try and understand the uh, structures which you actually observe, then one should take into account all of these possibilities. 
Uh, how does one determine all of this? This of course one determines by NMR by looking at which are the ones which are hydrogen bonded, which are the protons which are involved in the hydrogen bond, whether it is amino protons, amino protons, which nitrogen is involved. So all of this can be determined by uh, from NMR data. So this is the G1, N1 carbonyl symmetric CG, GG. So you have G1, G1 is uh, this okay. Now G1 is hydrogen bonded to the carbonyl, carbonyl here earlier we, you are using NN hydrogen bonds. So here is NHO, so NHO hydrogen bond here okay. N1 position, N1 position of this goes to the oxygen of this, N1 position of this one goes to the oxygen of this and both here in this case only the 6 membered ring is involved. And what happens here? Now this is GG N3 amino symmetric okay. Now here it is NHN hydrogen bonds and this is amino to N3 position, this is the N3 position. In this case this was used N1 position, here we are using the N3 position and N3 to this amino proton okay, GG N3 amino symmetric hydrogen bond. And the last one is GG N7, N7 N1 carbonyl amino. So N7 that is that is this one, this is the NHN hydrogen bond here to the N1 and the amino is hydrogen bonded to the oxygen here. So you have here one NHO hydrogen bond and one NHN hydrogen bond. Similarly GG N1 carbonyl N7 hydrogen bond. So N1 is where? This is the N1, N1 is, is bonded to the oxygen here, this is N1 is go to the oxygen here and this N7 is going to the amino. So this is the N1, there is the amino proton on the G, this G amino, amino is hydrogen bonded to the oxygen whereas this nitrogen is hydrogen bonded to the amino of the G. So these are GG base pairs. So you can have so many different kinds of base pairs, homeopurine base pairs. We saw AA base pairs and then we have the GG base pairs, different possibilities of hydrogen bonds. Then heteropurine, uh, heteropurine base pairing. So far we looked at AA or GG but you can also have GA base pairing. So GA base pairing is indicated here, different possibilities of GA pairing here. So the G here you see N1, N1, N1 carbonyl amino. So it is amino of the A is hydrogen bonded to the carbonyl of the G and the amino of G is hydrogen bonded to the nitrogen of A. So this is NHN hydrogen bond and this is the NHO hydrogen bond. So this was GA, N1, N1 carbonyl amino. Okay. So these are both N1 positions there, N1, N1. Okay. And these are GA, this is A. Notice here in the case of G, there is a uh, proton here, I indicated to you earlier. Okay. And what is present in the case of uh, A? There is a uh, proton at, uh, in the case of uh, G, there is an amino here, there is an H2 group, this is position number 2. At 2 position there is the amino group here. In the case of A at position number 2 there is also a uh, proton okay and uh, you have an amino group at the, this position there okay. So this is the uh, proton here is N2 position, this is a 9 and this is 8. So there is a H8 proton here and the H2 proton here okay. Let me write that here, this is H8 and this is H2 and this is H8. Uh, so these are the positions according to the labeling and that is what we have there okay. So in the same manner you have the GA N3 amino amino N1, GA N3 so where is G this is the G and N3 is, is this and this is going to the amino of the A so this is the NH2 so this NHN hydrogen bond is there and this amino this is at the 2 uh, position is hydrogen bonded to the N3 of, of this. Okay. And so therefore you can NHN, these are both NHN hydrogen bonds, here one NHO and one NHN and involves amino groups and the amino protons. And the next one is AgN7 N1 amino carbon. So this is the GA1 one possibility and this is the next possibility here. So this amino is going to the oxygen of uh, the A amino is going to the oxygen of the G. E amino is going to the oxygen of the G okay and then this NHN and this is the N1 position is going to the N7 here N1 to N7 
A G okay N 7 N 1 this is A this is N 7 this is N 1 and A G N 7 amino N 3 and look at these possibilities because there are so many hydrogen bond acceptors and donors in the base structure all these um, uh, acceptors and donors can accept a hydrogen bond and give a hydrogen bond uh, give a proton and that is why you have this so many different kinds of possibilities of hydrogen bonds. Okay. Pyrimidine pyrimidine base pairing as well likewise so far we looked at the pyrimidine pyrimidine base pairs you have possibilities of CC amino CC symmetric base pairing CC carbonyl amino symmetric base pairing and CU there is a CU pairing possibility although N3 N3 here and then UU pairing carbonyl N3 to symmetric and we will not uh, desc um, describe it in um, uh, detail uh, further. So, just the main structures are shown here okay. then you have possibility of UC N3 N3 and UU hydrogen bonding possible. So, you have so many different possibilities of hydrogen bonding and because all of these nitrogens and the carbonyl oxygens they are all acceptors and the, you have the donors are the amine, amino protons the, the NH2s and the NH protons. And these are present on both the all the bases you have uh, such kind of acceptors and donors and that is why you get different kinds of hydrogen bonds. Okay. Now as a result of all of these now I indicated here what are the different possibilities of the structures. We said so far we talked about the uh, various kinds of base pairing schemes and where do they occur, where do they occur. Okay. Now you have possibilities of a duplex here standard duplex then you can have when a running chain is going on depending upon the nature of the sequence which is present here it can assume different kinds of secondary structures single standard regions it has a single standard regions and you have a loop here okay there are loops coming out here in this place okay and this these are the so single standard regions you will have in this this is not paired at all so this, this portion is paired this is not paired so all kinds of folding schemes can occur okay so these are and then you can have the hairpins so the thing go like this this looks like a hairpin right so therefore and then you have these bulges here in a duplex in between the base sequence is such that it is not pairing possibility here this fellow bulges out so you will have a bulge here okay. So similarly there is a small um, bulge here there is only one but this is several several bases are involved in this therefore it becomes a longer loop and this is only one base which is going out here such kind of possibilities are there. And now in the internal loops within the within the duplex itself you can have certain regions where there are bulges in the middle. So because these are not complementary why does it happen because these are not complementary sequences. When there are not complementary sequence the possibility of a base pair does not exist then you will have these kinds of loops okay symmetric um, loops in the parallel structures and you can have uh, uh, anti-symmetric structures anti-symmetric loops and you have these kinds of possibilities and you can have four stranded structures. So in this place, so you have uh, the three stem, this structure has three stem, this structure has three stem okay and we will see that such structures do occur in RNA, ribosomal RNA, tRNA and things like that and there is an actually a region which is bulged out here. So the chain has to run like this. So these are all the possibilities indicating the folds of the nucleic acid structure and you see here is a four stem structure and such kind of such as do occur in the functional aspects whenever there is a kind of a recombinant process going on inside the in the replication process or uh, such kind of this kind of structures do happen in this this is a four stem process. So the stable DNA structure or RNA structure is one thing but the during the uh, when there are um, activities going on the DNA has to open up and interact with other systems other DNA segments or other protein segments and such kind of transient structures do happen and these transient structures the for example one of them is called the holiday junction. So you have here this is the four stranded structure. So there are many such kind of a structure which are possible these are functionally relevant so the DNA has to open itself to express express itself to form either for producing the proteins or replication process and things like that and in all those processes such kind of transient structures do occur. Okay. Now so far we talked about the two bases interacting with each other but you can also have base triples, base triple means so you have three base pairs, three bases are interacting with one another. See here you have the normal Watson Crick AT base pair 
normal Watson Crick AT base pair and here the normal Watson Crick GC base pair and on the top comes here a third base which is the T. So, you have a TAT triplet this is called as a base triple TAT triple and here it is a CGC triple ok. And look here in, in this base pairing what happens in the, the free position which is here the N7 position is used up for this base pairing in the for the third base ok. The oxygen of this uses this uh, amino proton this proton here ok amino proton and the N7 is used up for the T and this place. So, this kind of a this three triple base pairing uh, is possible. Similarly, for the GC, GC also same thing happens the free um, donors and the acceptors in the uh, Watson Crick base pair can accommodate another base in the major groove or if it comes on this other side it is a major groove. So, on this side it is a minor groove. So, you can have this sort of possibilities here. So, you have a GC and the G coming here ok. What do you add here? T A T. T is the pyrimidine A T and then of course, the third base is the pyrimidine. Here there is a third base which is the purine the G is coming and similarly in this case you have a, a T pair and then the A is coming the third base is A. And now what are these arrows here? These arrows are indicating which are the short distances because these are the observables in NMR spectra. See these proton pro what are indicated are the proton proton distances. So, all these proton proton distances are the ones which are short distances and we use these kind of short distances to identify or assign the individual bases and the individual protons. That is why these are indicated here indicated by uh, double headed arrows that we can actually observe these ones by recording spectra in water. Now, these are base triples. Now, you can also have quadruples ok it is called as the G tetrad. So, 4 G's can hydrogen bond with each other and to form a what is called as the G G G G G G tetrad. There are 4 G's here very symmetric. See and all the all the donor and the acceptor sites are used up here. So, it uses this nitrogen, this oxygen, this nitrogen amino proton and this amino proton. So, all of these are involved in the hydrogen bonding in a very symmetrical manner. So, this produces a G tetrad which is an extremely stable structure very stable structure. We will say I will show you examples of this how this 4 stranded structure is possible and how this can be extremely stable. Okay. So, typically how does the BS DNA triple helix look like? So, you have the green one is a normal duplex normal duplex and the triple helix comes the third strand comes in this major groove ok it comes on this and then you see the third strand is hydrogen bonded to the base pairs in the duplex and this is the space filling model of the same sort of a structure. And these ones are uh, such kind of structures are possible in the quadruplexes. So, the four stranded structures are possible here. So, you have the G tetrad and you can have quadruplexes of various types various types of quadruplexes are possible. These are called parallel stranded quadruplexes and here you have two strands going in one direction two strands going in other direction and you can also have loops here ok. The chain runs like this and loops around come here the other chain runs like this and loops around and comes down here and these 4 G's which are in the thing they can form hydrogen bonded structures. And in all of these is the um, glycosidic torsion angles becomes important ok. So, and depending upon what is the orientation of this you can have different kinds of base pairing schemes and so that determines the base pair structure. Then the last one structure which has been uh, discovered uh, some time back is called the I motif. The I motif is a structure which is between CC plus see the CC base pairing is possible, but the one of the C gets protonated here and because of that protonation it gets a positive charge therefore, it is called as the CC structure. Now, here what happens is you have two duplexes two duplexes interdigitating that is why it is called as I motif. Okay. So, it is it can be different molecules or the same molecule loops around turns around and things like that and comes back and that is shown is in this case the chain starts here let us say goes like this goes like this and then goes like this and then turns around and then. So, these are the various possibilities that all these are required because of the DNA has to fold in many different ways and all those structures will have to be stabilized and this stabilization happens because of the different possibilities of hydrogen bonding pairs.
So uh, this is actually a quadruplex how does the quadruplex structure look like? So this shows here the four how are the four strands accommodated in this okay. So that is the quadruplex structure you have this four colors here these are the individual strands which are going as you can form a structure of this type this is the DNA quadruplex. So I think uh, uh, we possibly stop here and now of course here the DNA protein complexes can be formed DNA protein complexes are important in various. Now here it shows how a duplex DNA can fold and accommodate the proteins and the proteins can interact with the DNA and uh, proteins will have to express and protein will have to interact at various sites in the DNA duplex or or, or uh, with the other various kinds of structures that are possible either with the single stranded areas, the double stranded areas, different possibilities of interactions are possible. So uh, there is a whole variety of uh, structural uh, uh, possibilities, enormous complexities in the DNA structure and people thought the only duplex DNA is a simple thing that is the only thing about the DNA but of late we know that there are so much there is so much more about the nucleic acid structure which need remains to be explored much more needs to be done with regard to the nucleic acids and especially RNA structures so many different varieties of RNA structures are possible. So I think with that uh, I will stop here.